Welcome to the channel Easy Way to Physics with Jaya. Today we can learn about the image formation in concave lens. How to draw the ray diagrams in the case of concave lens. Then magnification in mirrors and lenses. Also power of the lens. Before starting, subscribe the channel and tap the bell button to get the notifications. First of all, we have to learn about the center of curvature, optical center and principal axis of concave lens. Center of curvature is the center of the circle of which the lens is a part. There are two center of curvatures as shown in the uh, diagram. C1 and C2 are the two centers of curvatures. Then optical center O, that is the center of the lens itself. And principal axis is the line passing through the centers of curvature of the concave lens. Now we can watch a video which explains how to draw the ray diagram showing the image formation in concave lens. Today we learn about the image formation in concave lens. For that we need a scale, an eraser, a compass with sharp pencil and another sharp pencil. Okay. First we do is we draw a straight line on the paper. And this straight line will be the principal axis of our lens. On that line we mark a point. Anywhere at one side we can draw a mark a point. And fix the pin of the compass on that point then draw a circle circle of any radius you can take okay now this is the circle and next to this circle we draw another circle with the same radius for that see but i leave a small gap between these two circles this gap will be the thickness of our lens in the middle now I fix this compass like this with the same radius. When we fix the compass what we do is we will mark that point where we fix the pin of the compass here. See. Then draw another circle there. another circle I am drawing. Unwanted lines are there. We can rub it and make it neat. So these are two points. We got the centers of the circle. They are the center of curvatures. This is C2 and this is C1. Now this is the middle point of our lens. To the top and bottom of the lens of the principal axis we take 2 centimeters or 1.5 centimeters each then mark that as the ends of the edges of the lens okay here see 1.5 here also 1.5 this is 2 centimeter 2 to each I am taking 2 centimeter here 2 centimeter that uh, your wish you can take any height for the lens that is, doesn't depend our image formation here and here so this is our lens now this is the optic center the middle point is the optical center or optic center of the lens now the next step is to draw the focus to draw the mark the focus we have to measure the distance between O and C1 see distance between O and C1 is 3.4 it is 3.4 centimeter half of that I am taking that is 1.7 1.7 from one side I am marking that will be the focus f1 now this side also I can measure same way from O to C2 the distance is 3.4 and half of that I am taking as 1.7 so this is F2. Now we got F1, F2, C1 and C2. Okay. 
Now the next step is to draw the ray diagram. You have to draw it very neatly. Now see this part. This part is the our lens is kept here. You know concave lens. It's cave shape in the middle and top and bottom. It's edges we have drawn. Now the object you can draw anywhere uh, either beyond 2F or between C and uh, F or between O and F. Anywhere you can draw. I am taking the object between F and 2F. 2F itself is C1, right? So between F and C I am drawing a object, a small object. Make sure the length, height of the uh, object is less than that of the lens. Now from the top of the lens, uh, top of the object, we are drawing two lines. One is passing through the optic center and one is going parallel to the principal axis and falling on the lens and refracting. Now the first one is drawing through the optic center from the top of the object through the optic center a line is drawn this is the first ray you know it will pass without any deviation second one before that you can draw a middle line from where the refraction takes place middle line of the lens from where we have to draw the change in direction so the second ray of light parallel to the principal axis I am drawing. After refraction, it diverges from the lens. In which direction it diverges? It appears as if it is diverging from the focus. So when we draw, we have to keep the scale like this. See, this is the focus. Here, we have to fix the pencil and keep and make sure the scale is passing the line we draw passes through these two points touches these two points the ray of light which falls on the middle of the lens and the focus this part I am drawing with dotted lines and from here it goes straight arrow mark is compulsory to show the direction of the light now see these two rays, first ray passes through the optic center, second ray refracting or diverging out from the lens but it appears as if it is coming from the focus. These two rays uh, intersect at this point and here we get the image. Since they are not actually meeting, the rays are not actually meeting, they are diverging in two different directions. But they appear as if they are coming from here, appear as if they are joining here. So there we get the image. Since the rays of light are not actually meeting, we get a virtual image. The image formed is virtual. And since it is formed above the principal axis, it is erect. Also it is a diminished image or small image. This is the image formation in concave lens. If you keep the object anywhere on this lens, at infinity or at C or between F and 12, anywhere, you get image like this only. You will get virtual, erect and diminished image and uh, that will be formed between focus and optic center. Now what we have, the last step is we can wrap for the exam when you draw. You can wrap this circus and make the drawing very neat okay you will get high score for uh, neatness neatly drawing diagrams teachers give more marks so rub out all other unwanted lines keep only what is needed okay thank you magnification Magnification we are studying in the case of mirrors as well as in the case of lenses. Magnification is comparison of the size of the image with the size of the object. Wherever image formation is there, magnification is also there. Here in the first diagram, we are getting an enlarged image. Object is small, image is bigger. 
So in that case, we say magnification is more than 1. Whereas, in the second case, we get a diminished image. Object is bigger, whereas image is smaller. In that case, we say magnification is less than 1. We can say how it is. Magnification is calculated using the formula m is equal to height of the image divided by height of the object. If h dash is the height of the image and h is the height of the object, we can write m is equal to h dash divided by h. So, what happens if the image is bigger than object? we get m value of m as more than 1. And if image is smaller than the object, we get the value of magnification as less than 1. Thus, we can define the magnification as the ratio of height of the image to the height of the object. I will tell you once again, magnification can be defined as the ratio of height of the image to the height of the object. Magnification is positive for erect images and it is negative for inverted images. Because height of the inverted image is considered as negative. Look at the second diagram here. We can divide the plane containing the lens into four quadrant by drawing an x-axis and y-axis with the optical center as the origin. Now, we can see that the inverted image, image is coming in the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, we get the y-coordinate as negative. Y-coordinate is taken as the height of the image. So, y coordinate is negative or height of the image is negative. So, magnification is height of the image divided by height of the object that we get as negative. For example, in the first case, the object height is 2 cm and image height is 4 cm. The magnification is 4 divided by 2. Both are positive. Whereas in the second case, object height is 3 cm, whereas image height is negative 4 cm because it is an inverted image. In that case, the magnification is negative 4 divided by 3. We get a negative number. If the object and image are of the same size, the magnification is 1. In this diagram, magnification is negative 1 because object and image are of the same size and the image form this inverted image. Magnification is also related to the object distance and image distance. Object distance is the distance of the object from the mirror or the lens. From the mirror means from the pole of the mirror. From the lens means from the optical center of the lens. And we used to represent the letter V for image distance and the letter U for object distance. Thus magnification is V divided by U or image distance divided by object distance. Thus, magnification has two formulas. Magnification is equal to height of the image divided by height of the object and image distance divided by object distance. If there are more than two lenses in combination, the total magnification is the product of the magnifications of the individual lenses. For example, if M1 is the magnification of the first lens, 
M2 is the magnification of the second lens and M3 is the magnification of the third lens and so on. If it is going on like that N lenses, the total magnification is equal to M1 into M2 into M3 up to Mn. Here comes an exercise question. The magnification produced by a plane mirror is plus 1. What does this mean? The answer comes like this. Magnification is equal to height of the image divided by height of the object. That is also equal to image distance divided by object distance. Now, how can we explain? If the magnification is equal to plus 1, that means that s dash divided by h is equal to plus 1 or h dash is equal to h. That is, height of the image is equal to height of the object. That is the first point. Now, second point is m is equal to plus 1 means that v by u is equal to positive 1. That is equal, that is v is equal to u or distance of the object from the mirror is equal to distance of the image from the mirror. Now the third point is since m is equal to plus 1 the image formed is erect. Power of a lens. The ability of a lens to converge or diverge the rays of light is called power of a lens. It is calculated as 1 by f or reciprocal of the focal length itself is the power of the lens. That means if focal length is more, the power of the lens will be less. If focal length is less, power of the lens will be more. The SI unit of power of the lens is diopter. It is represented by the letter D. If the focal length of a lens is 1 meter, then power of that lens is 1 diopter. Or in short, we can define 1 diopter as the power of the lens having a focal length of 1 meter. Once again, 1 diopter is defined as the power of the lens having a focal length of 1 meter. Power of the convex lens, that is converging lens, is taken as positive, whereas power of diverging lens or concave lens is considered as negative. Here comes a question. An eye specialist prescribed a corrective lens of power negative 2.5 diopter. What kind of lens it is and what is its focal length? Answer is, uh, first we will write what is the given things. That is, power of the lens is negative 2.5 d. This means that uh, that negative sign shows it is a concave lens or a diverging lens. Then, to calculate the focal length, we find the reciprocal of the power. P is equal to 1 by F or F is equal to 1 by P. So, it is 1 divided by 2.5 or that is equal to, to remove the decimal. We will multiply the numerator and denominator with 10. Then 10 by 25 we will get. And how can we reduce it into smaller number? 10 we split as 2 into 5 and 25 we write it as 5 into 5. Then we will get it as 2 by 5 or 0 0.4. M. M is the focal length, uh, unit of focal length, meter, 0 0.4 meter. Hope you understood the topic well. Give your doubts and suggestions in the comment box. Thank you.